what I call the new paradigm for black America. The new paradigm basically is, is this idea that we've got to change our thinking in a multitude of ways. We absolutely must, absolutely must shift how we think about everything. And so um, I said, you know, and I and the, and the new paradigm kind of came from almost like a four legged table. And I, I sort of laid out the four areas that I think we have to think about as a community. I actually cover this in my book. Um, uh, it takes a village to raise the bar. The book I told you, you can get at drboyswalkins.net for free. You just download it. It's totally free. Um, and uh, anyway, the four core areas are wealth, education, family and community, wealth, education, family and community. Now, why did I pick those four areas? Well, because you, you know, well, you know, the importance of wealth. Uh, most of us as black people, if we are enslaved, if we're not happy, it's because we're not where we want to be financially. If you had enough money to tell your boss to kiss your butt and quit your job or had that F you money on deck where you could just cuss him out and walk out the door, you wouldn't be um, doing whatever it is that you have to do uh, on a daily basis. They wouldn't be able to stress you out as much, you know, because I learned a long time ago. My mama told, told me many years ago that if, 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 if somebody ain't paying your damn bills, then they can't tell you what to do in your house. They can't tell you how to live your life. They can tell you nothing. So I said, when I get older, I want to I want to make sure I don't have the wrong people paying my bills. When your oppressor is paying your bills, then your oppressor is going to do what oppressors do. Oppressors oppress. That's their job. That's their like lions, you know, eat gazelles like like, you know, snakes will bite you like an oppressor oppresses. Pimps, pimps be pimping. You know what I mean? Like like uh, construction workers do construction. Uh, you know, waitresses wait tables. Um, you know, doctors take care of patients. Well, oppressors oppress. You know, uh, white people act white. You know, racist people, they, their job is to be racist. That's what they're going to do. They're, you're not going to change that job description for them. They're not going to ever change their behavior just because you asked them to. So uh, if you're getting your bills paid by your oppressor, then uh, I don't understand why anyone would be shocked or uh, surprised if the oppressor is using their economic power to oppress you, you pretty much have given them leverage. You've given, it's like in, you're in a basketball game and you just gave them the ball and a wide open route to the basket. Well, why would they not dribble up, put it up against the glass and score a couple points for their team? Well, you're not playing defense. You're not playing offense. You're not even playing the game the right way because you're not supposed to just go hand your opponent the ball and say, here you go. Uh, the basket's right over here, sir. Just go right, put it in there, sir, because I want you to score some points. And then later on, get mad because the score is 147 to five. Like, why would you be surprised if you're losing the game when you're handing the ball to the to the <clears throat> to the opponent every chance you get? Doesn't make any sense, right? So basically, when we're not thinking about wealth and economics, we're handing the ball to the opponent. Every time we go and we support white businesses more than we support black businesses, we're handing the ball to the opponent. Every time we uh, spend our money on nonsense instead of saving or investing, we're handing the ball to the opponent. Every time our kids know more about filling out a job application than they know about creating a business, we're handing the ball to our opponent. Think about this. There are many, many ways to make money. There are a thousand different ways to skin that cat. There are a million different ways that your child could grow up learning how to get the money they need in order to pay their bills. Why is it that most of our kids only know one way? One way. The only method they know is fill out a job application and get a job typically working for, for their oppressor. That is Absolute insanity. It doesn't make any sense. There's a million ways to make money. I mean, you can do stocks and bonds and real estate and 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 have a business. And there's a thousand different businesses you can create. You know, there's a million different ways to make money. But we tend to focus on one. Well, where does that come from? Well, it comes from slavery. It comes from the old paradigm of thinking. So I've pretty much said, let's start a new paradigm. Let's start our children off where they never even learn how to eat that, that getting a job is an option until they learn all the other different ways to make money first. It's like, okay, you might have to go work for your oppressor and be a slave one day and get your ass kicked. Okay, that's an option. That's that's option number 447.5. We're gonna put that way at the bottom of the list. But before that, let's talk about how you can start a, a damn good business so you never have to do work for your oppressor. And let's look at all the different businesses that you can have. Now, let's talk about starting having a side hustle so that even if you have a job, you got extra money so you can have that FU money. Let's talk about saving and investing so that you can have money stacked to the side so that in case you have to quit your job on, on the fly, you, you're gonna be good. Let's talk about in real estate. Oh my God, do you know how much money people make flipping houses? Do you know how much money people make renting uh, apartments out of buildings that they that they purchased? Do you know how much money people make by, by just owning properties? Property with the, the capital gains appreciation. You know how much money people make in real estate? My God, right? Like, like, like literally just go down that list. And then when you get, when you literally, when they literally have rejected 
almost every other possible human way to make money, then you say, yeah, well, you know, if you really just want to go work for a white person, like, go, yeah, you can go apply for a job. Okay, sure. We're not going to job shame you. We're just going to kind of wonder what's wrong with you because you're choosing to go work for the person that you're claiming is responsible for your oppression. That's like somebody, that's like a, somebody going to work for the person who wants to rape them. Like, that doesn't make any sense. You, you don't do that. It doesn't, it doesn't add up. But then again, I guess the Cosby accuser, some of them actually did go and hang out with him after I, so I, I ain't going to talk about that. All right. Next, number two, um, make sure you hit the like button, share button, subscribe button. Make sure you hit, hit those buttons. Um, number two, uh, so there's wealth, then there's education. Education came to mind because I don't think as a community that educational excellence is as important as it should be. Uh, we shouldn't have children that are being sent to school just to get by. We shouldn't be proud just because Tyrone knows how to read or just because Lil Pookie graduated. Um, we should put as much energy into high levels of education as we put into basketball, football, and uh, everything else. Again, old paradigm of thinking is slave thinking. I want to go, uh, you know, sing, dance, uh, throw football, throw basketball, entertain Massa. Massa will take care of me. It goes back to what Dr. Claude Anderson refers to as meritorious manumission, uh, or actually meritorious manumission was actually when the slaves got rewarded for telling on uh, other slaves. But then there's also the the fact that he said that slaves were typically rewarded if they um, entertained white folks and made them laugh, uh, you know, through sports or, or, or dancing and singing, or if they protected white people. Like if they if you saved a white person's life or protected a white person, you gain favor with Massa. So that's why we're so quick to go cake for Becky. And that's also why we're so quick to want to go entertain Massa. So uh, basically, I think education should be more important than entertainment. Uh, and that means if your child's going to a public school, you push your child to be the best student in that school. You don't push that child to make C's and B's. You push that child to make straight A's. Also, when they go to college, um, I'll be damned if I'm ever going to be comfortable with the fact that I see thousands of college students who will put more energy and more time into preparing for a step show than they will put into preparing for a biology test. And there's nothing wrong with going to a step show. There's nothing wrong with being in the step show. But I think it's very stupid and fucking retarded that we literally will have the most pristine step shows imaginable, but then getting C's and, and D's on your math test. Like that doesn't make any sense. That's literally, again, you're handing the ball to the opponent because when you don't have a good educational background, you're setting yourself up to be oppressed. Also, we have to occupy education. We must take over the education of our kids. We could do that tomorrow. If we spent the money that we spent going to see the Black Panther and put that much, same amount of money together, we could have a whole school system tomorrow. There are thousands. If I put out a call tomorrow, if, I would, if we raised $100 million and I put out a call tomorrow to Black educators saying, look, we cannot pay you what you would make in a white public school system, but we could pay you half of that. We'll pay you $20 an hour, $25 an hour for you to come and teach Black babies. I would have hundreds of applicants within hours. I would have hundreds of black folks ready to go. Like, okay, where do I sign? Let's let's make let's make this happen. Where are the babies at? We got them, right? They're not and they're no, they wouldn't just be showing up with, with education and books. They would be showing up with the most important ingredient, which is love. See, when your children are being sent to these little penitentiaries called public schools, they're they're being sent to this penitentiary in a place that is cold and nasty and metallic and it runs just like a prison. When I went to visit um, I went to Detroit uh, with my friends Ryan Mack and uh, and uh, Dr. Christopher Emden. And Christopher Emden is a respected educator at Columbia University. He has tenure at Columbia in the field of education. Uh, and Christopher, we went to visit a school and then we went to visit a prison in Detroit. And when we went to go visit the school and the prison, he said, Boyce, you would have no idea how many similarities I just saw in terms of how these two institutions are run. They are just like each other. I said, yeah, I felt the same way. I felt like the prison was just like the school and the school was just like the prison. Just to, you know, the school, the, the prison had security guards, the school had security guards. The prison, the school had black kids. The prison had lots of black people. I saw, I saw so many black people walking through that yard. I thought I was at a fucking HBCU. I said, is this, is this, uh, uh, is this a penitentiary or is this Hampton University? Like, like what is, I don't understand. Like I, I'm literally seeing so many black people that I feel like I'm on an HBCU campus. So if that ain't slavery, I don't know what is. Um, and by the way, I want you guys to know if you're on Facebook, my phone is going to die in a minute. 
So, so you may want to go to Dr. Boyce Watkins or drboystv.com to follow the conversation. If I, if I disappear, I'll just keep talking. I'll leave you guys up there. But if, if I disappear, you can go to drboystv.com. Somebody write that in. You should subscribe anyway, because you should follow me on different platforms. If this is interesting to you, if you don't like me, then it doesn't count. Uh, or if you're a hater and you just want to like keep up, then that's okay. Haters are welcome too. I like you. I love the haters. All right. So anyway, um, it, so, so we must take over education. Uh, the most the people most qualified to educate black children are black people. Uh, it's it's not the white lady from the suburbs. Uh, again, new paradigm of thinking. Right. Uh, also, we must pursue educational excellence. Uh, we should not want to be mediocre. When I send co- when I go talk to college students, um, I tell them I, I'm probably hard on them. I probably sound like I'm hard on them, but I tell them you should study for four to six hours a day. I said, I said, I'm, I don't understand this. Like you act like studying four to six hours a day is impossible and it's too much and it's everything else. And I tell them a couple of things. I say, number one, you're in a war. You're in a war. And, and, and in a war, uh, you can't win a war if you're thinking more about partying and hanging out and chilling than you are about trying to strive and succeed. Right. That's drboystv.com. Thank you. Um, you know, you can't win a war if you are high and drunk all the time and trying to kick it and trying to chill and spending all your time on entertainment while your opponent, your potential oppressor is preparing battle plans to destroy you. Like that's the first thing I tell them. Second thing I tell them is I don't understand why it's so crazy for you to understand or, or even get why I would tell you to study four to six hours a day for your future. Because when you graduate and you go work for that white man, he's going to have you working eight to 10 hours a day and you're going to do it without question. You will do it in lockstep. You'll be he'll say he'll say, um, you know, he'll say, uh, boy, I need you to be here by eight o'clock in the morning. I need you to stay till till seven. You'll be like, yes, massa. And you will do exactly what he tells you to do. You so so you will be consistent for him, but you won't be consistent for yourself. You will work your ass off for him, but you won't work your ass off for yourself. You will put all your energy into his dream but we'll put zero energy into your dream. Like that doesn't make any sense. That ain't nothing but slave thinking. That ain't nothing but you basically um, behaving like somebody who wants to be a slave. Well, you know, if you keep handing your opponent the ball, then they're going to win the game. So uh, ultimately, when you don't educate yourself, you're handing the oppressor power in your life. You, you may not work. You may not be working hard now, but you're going to work hard later because all that lack of education is going to catch up with your dumb ass when you can't get opportunities because you did not prepare yourself for the future. So the third thing in the new paradigm, let me let me write a quick note to people on Facebook to tell them. Um, um, hold on. To tell them they can rejoin us here. All right. So there we go. All right. Make sure you hit the subscribe button, the share button, the like button and the, and the thumbs up button. Uh, also, don't forget, if you want a free e-copy of my book, It Takes a Village to Raise the Bar, you can go to drboycewatkins.net. That's drboycewatkins.net. So you see, uh, I, 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 I can't read your name. I'm sorry, brother. He says, that's why we open our own school in, in is that M-U-I-N-Y-C? Is that Muni, New York? Okay, but that's cool. I think it's great. Uh, but, but congratulations. Tell me the name of your school, and I'll definitely give it a shout out. Um, uh, Amity, where, where were you when I was in school? Where, where, where was I when I was in school? I wish if, if I were 10 and I could hear from someone like, who thinks like me back then, I would have been a whole different person. I would have had a whole different experience in life. I wouldn't have, um, I wouldn't have made the mistakes that I made, you know? And so uh, that's why I want to share this because I don't want other people to make the same mistakes I did. So anyway, let's keep going. Uh, so, so the, the new paradigm is wealth, education, then you got family. Uh, family is very important for building power and building wealth. Uh, the number one reason they want to destroy black families is because they want to destroy black people. When people do not have family, it's very, very difficult for them to succeed. It's very, very difficult for them to unify. It's very, very difficult for them to accumulate assets. It's very, very difficult for them to win. So ultimately, uh, for black people, we must think about family. We must think about how we manage our relationships. We must think about how we treat black women, how black women treat black men. We must think about all of these things so that we can build the kind of of, of community that we want to build, which leads to the last part of the new paradigm, which is community. Uh, A community is nothing more than than a set of families. So if you want the black community Community to win, you must have the black family win. If you want the black family to win, then black people in the, on an individual level must win as well, right? So ultimately, when you create people in the community that are that are wealthier, that are financially secure, you have stronger families. When you create people that are better educated, you have stronger families. When you create people that uh, respect each other and love each other and support each other, you have stronger families and stronger communities. Uh, in fact, uh, you think about just the the idea of buying black. 
I think you got to really think about this and ask yourself this question. Why is it that black people support white businesses more than they support their own? Right. You've been trained to do that. You've been trained to think that way. So what you're going to have to do is untrain yourself from that slave thinking and grow into a line of thinking that's going to be beneficial to you and not just uh, not just your oppressor. You can't keep handing your opponent the ball and then wondering why they're scoring on you. You can't keep funding white supremacy and then wonder why you live in a white supremacist country. M trillions of dollars uh, that support white supremacy comes from black people. So think about this. I mean, imagine if somebody was repeatedly getting robbed and beaten and raped and they were giving money to the rapist or to the robber to go and buy better weapons to rob and rape them with. That wouldn't make any sense. But that's what we do when we're not supporting our own and we're supporting other people.